We are watching the D'Amelio experiment fail. And now they won't go away. Wait, what does that mean? There's probably one thing that comes to mind when you hear the name Charlie D'Amelio. TikTok. And that's TikTok. Yeah. In March of 2020, she became the number one most followed TikToker in the world. And for most of Holy. you, that's all she will ever be. Yo, does she still have a following? Is she still like popping? Matter of fact, better question. Do you guys follow her on TikTok? Are you a little D'Amelio, D'Amelioleans? I don't, what is her follower names? D'Amelio. I tried. However, her and her family have tried just about every career imaginable since their meteoric rise to fame. Yet, they are still known as being famous for nothing. Dang. Today, we are going to look at the incredible story of a normal American family who was launched into fame for no reason, and how they are destroying their family trying to entertain an audience that does not care about them. The D'Amelios lived a comfortable existence in a traditional New England suburb. Their parents were already rich before the fame as the sisters attended the King's School in wow. Stanford, Connecticut, which cost $50,000 per year to attend high school. Char <sighs> Can you believe that, chat? There is there is literal college campuses, but for high school. Oh my God, I've seen a TikTok and they had like a crazy cafeteria with, with like restaurants and all that, bro. And I got, I got excited for Domino's Pizza on Fridays. Like what the f damn, my life sucks. Holy shit rich people it's just it's it's so messed up it's so messed up and then people act like life is fair bro oh oh i hate it i hate it so much charlie describes her life before tiktok as normal i would go to school go to dance do my homework and go to bed it was pretty much like every other teenager's life charlie downloaded tiktok like anyone else to distract their mind from the mundaneness of everyday life she uploaded her first video in march of 2019 which was her and a friend lip syncing to a random sound bite she didn't expect anyone is this in school bro my school had the same time of walls but there's just like boogers and blood and a bunch of stuff on it this looks pristine like it's freshly painted every day dang i want to go to a cool college high school like tuition thing friends to watch her videos considering she had a deep passion for dance competing as a competitive dancer since she was a toddler tiktok was the obvious outlet to post fun dance videos but she could have never predicted what would happen next uh -oh. in july 2019 on her way to dance class charlie posted a duet of her following the choreography of a user named move with joy the video instantly went viral and her notifications blew up during class I had like seven followers, but when she picked up her phone after class, she had 2,000. Although Charlie claimed she never wanted attention nor was trying to be famous, after her first taste of virality, she prioritized TikTok like someone who did it as a full-time job. Mm. She posted every day, sometimes multiple times per day, and very quickly she gained hundreds of thousands of followers. Although she was a skilled dancer, it's not like she was doing Jabberwockies level moves that would impress uh, you. In fact, you wouldn't uh, be able to tell that she was a skilled dancer from the mediocre moves she posted on the app. So why was she so popular? Well, even she didn't know. I wish I could give everyone an explanation as to what happened, but I have no idea. I'm just doing what I do every day and posting it, I guess. How did she get so viral, Chad? Does anyone know? Like, actually know? She's stiff as shit with her movements, I won't lie. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you on her? I don't know. Nope. No idea. No. Okay. Insane to me, as it is for everyone else watching. At the time, the app was dominated by young users. TikTok classified more than a third, roughly 16.6 .6 million, of its 49 million daily users in the United States as being 14 years old or younger. Charlie was wow. 15 years old at the time, making her appealing to the age group of the most active users. How she look? I feel like even now she looks the same. How you look 20 at like 15? She have makeup on or something? Some ain't right. Since it was working, 15. She just that's what I'm saying, bro. That shit. What the fuck? I'm trying to grow and see what happens. But her being popular became. She literally looks joke. the same. Like she did not grow at all. The Charlie D'Amelio challenge was a huge trend where people would overreact to her incredibly average TikToks. <laughs> In a never ending ironic loop, people were going viral reacting to her videos, which made her even more viral, which led to even more <laughs> people asking, why is she famous? Making fun of her became an easy way to gain millions of views. But some things she did were genuinely cringe. Uh -oh. Like her very very first YouTube video intro. Hey guys, it's Charlie and I'm super excited to be sharing with you my first ever we all got to start somewhere. You can't even be mad. We all got to start somewhere, chat. What do you mean, ill? We all got to start somewhere, chat. YouTube video on my YouTube channel. As you can imagine, this became a huge meme. Hi, this is Charlie, and I'm super excited to be sharing with you my first ever YouTube video on my YouTube channel. Hey guys, my name's Jay. My dad left me at six. <laughs> oh! 
Not many people were making money on this app at the time, but in 2019, being a full-time social media personality was a realistic career path. So she definitely had that in the back of her mind and kept pushing along. Then one dance defined the rest of Charlie's The Renegade! Career. In October 2019, she performed a dance called The Renegade, which was a popular trend coinciding with the K-Camp song called Lottery. The simplistic moves made every teen- There it is. So, so chat, she blew up off of this dance, bro? How? Maybe I should start dancing. I can dance! Teenager on the internet want to give it a try. She was already popular, but this exploded her to over 5 million followers Whoa. on TikTok. Lottery became the first sound on the platform to reach 20 million videos. Holy. If you were unfamiliar with the app, you would think this was the only TikTok dance. Charlie would post multiple videos per week doing this one dance. It is now four years later. So she is she like really good at the dance? It wasn't even her dance? But like, was she really good at it? No, 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 I guess, no, no. She stole it and watered it down not even she's average i feel like y'all hating i'm seeing a whole lot of no's y'all must be hating no just pale <laughs> i mean it sounds right for internet culture bro some hey my melanin kings all right we out here doing things right and then a fucking little what, what are they the little crusaders what are they called the the fucking the what the fuck are they called? Oh my god, I can't think of the nickname right now. Motherfuckers would do the same exact thing and then blow up, bro. I'm not gonna say it's why I look like this, but I mean, hey, I'm just saying it's why I look like this. All right, stop playing with me. And some people still only know her as the TikTok girl who does this dance. By the end of 2019, she had 18 million followers. Her sister Dixie had a few million followers, and even her mother and father had TikTok accounts with hundreds of thousands of followers. The D'Amelio family was a full-blown business now, wow. and it was time to capitalize on it. Charlie got to step into Hollywood and voice act in the animated children's film oh, no. Star Dog and Turbo Cat. The family signed to United Talent Agency in January of 2020 and began receiving massive business opportunities. Charlie got to meet and collaborate with her idol, Jennifer Lopez. That's her idol? I'm sorry, Jennifer's kind of washed though. This week, you guys as a family are going to the Super Bowl. <gasps> we have four tickets to the Super Bowl. Hotels, airfare, we're going to every single event. And we get to go spend time with J-Lo and meet J-Lo and hang with her. I can't even, I can't even be like happy for her. I'm not going to lie to you. After knowing that she had, she, she they were paying $50,000 every year for tuition. Like they was already rich. I'm not, I'm not even happy about this. No one likes a, no one likes a motherfucker on top. To be honest with you. She was also featured in a Super Bowl commercial for Sabra Hummus. Oh. Mm. Mm. Okay, boomer. Clearly, acting is not her strong suit, but the only talent that Charlie brought to the table was doing the renegade dance. However, she was incorrectly credited with creating the dance, uh -oh. as TikTok users referred to her as the CEO of Renegade, which would ultimately lead to her first major controversy. In February 2020, the New York Times published an article revealing the actual creator of the renegade dance, uh -oh. suggesting that Charlie and other creators emulated the routine without crediting the source. The well, renegade was created by 14-year-old choreographer Jeliah Harmon. And they stole her shit. Who designed the dance in September 2019 and posted it to her Instagram. A month oh, damn. Charlie was that was that sped up or slowed down? Or this had like two fruit loops. Motherfucking fruit roll-ups or something before before starting this video. Why is she going normal speed? This is normal speed? Damn, bitch. I'm not going to say 14-year-old did it better. I mean, I, would I be wrong if I said no? Because, no. Why she, why she going so fast? Faster was better? No. It's a fast dance. Canceled? I don't, I don't give a fuck. I can't process it at all. It's just like, man, arms is flailing. Faster went to the beat of the song. Oh. The actual dance was fast. Too fast for you? Yeah, I can't I can't keep up with it. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I can't emulate this. My, I would just look stupid. My arms is going to be flailing. I can't do it. It was supposed to be a fast dance, but when Charlie did it slower more people were able to copy it. Oh, uh, yeah, that's literally what I was going to say. I, I can't dance that fast. The other ones seem easier. Instagram, a month before. You can't dance at all, so you're good regardless. <laughs> Bitch, I'll kill you. Charlie recreated it on TikTok. I was happy when I saw my dance all over, she said, but I wanted credit for it. What added to the uproar was that Jeliah was a young black girl who many felt was being overshadowed in a market filled with white teenage girls like... And that's how it is, bro. The colonizers be colonizing and then act like, oh yeah, no, I, I did this, I did this. And honestly, it happens in the VTube community a lot. It's happened to me a lot. It's still happening. I wish it would stop. But I mean, hey, what can you do about it? <laughs> Unoriginal motherfuckers. Charlie and newcomer Addison Ray, who stole her dance and profited immensely. Unless you have a copyright for the dance, then nobody can technically steal it. However, there are countless examples of influencers who gained a career from creating one dance, but then never figured out a way to make money from other people doing the dance. 
Charlie, through a publicist, said that she was so glad to know who created the dance. I know it's associated with me, she said, but I'm so happy to give July a credit. Shortly after the New York Times article was published, Charlie posted a video to the TikTok performing the dance alongside July and Addison Ray. Now it's considered standard practice to put dance credit mm. or DC, then tag the creator who originally made it. Wow, I wish it was standard practice to do that with content or jokes or just anything. I guess it is in normal content creating sphere, but not retubing. It in the caption. Even when Charlie went on Jimmy Fallon to dance in front of millions, they DC'd everyone in the description below. I'm just glad young daddy Cack got their credit. <laughs> Fortunately for Charlie, this controversy kind of went away quickly because the world got hit with the pandemic and had bigger problems to address. By the end of March 2020, nearly the whole world was shut down, with hundreds of millions of people inside browsing the internet all day. TikTok gained 315 million new years. What happened? What people steal? I'm not going to say they stole, bro, because it's just content creation sphere in general. But at the same time, I feel like there's a lot of unoriginal, unfunny motherfuckers, and, and they like to, uh, I say, emulate a lot. And it's a valid growing, uh, like you can grow that way. You know what I mean? It's valid. So I, as a content creator, you want to grow, so you're going to do what other people do. Sure. But I mean, it feels very colonizing. You know what I mean? It feels very colonizing. I don't know. Users. So when Charlie officially became the number one most followed TikTok account on March 25th, it was huge news. She surpassed Lauren Gray at 41.4 million followers. TikTok having a rising star was crucial. Like when motherfuckers out here writing down notes and shit, for their I don't success. know, bro. Charlie was their model example of how this app can change your life, but it just kept leading to more and more people asking, why is she number one? True. Why is she famous? True. It didn't help that Charlie embarked on the most generic career path as any other random LA socialite influencer. She started a podcast. The Ramble Podcast Network struck a deal with Charlie and Dixie to launch a series called Two Chicks. Oh no. They lasted 27 episodes, but it didn't take off since the two aren't really that great at talking. Oh. Then Charlie and Dixie partnered with Morphe Cosmetics to launch a makeup line. Makeup reviewers on YouTube thought that the products were just average, specifically designed for young teenagers and just felt like a business play rather mm. than an ambitious endeavor. Dunkin' Donuts offered a limited time drink on their menu Ew. called The Charlie. Then she collaborated with Hollister, designing a limited edition fleece sweatshirt. Charlie later appeared yeah, in merch. Jennifer Lopez's music video for the single Pati Plus Lonely, and in Bebe Rexa's Baby I'm Jealous shortly after. Charlie's basic influencer journey was likely due to pressure from her managers letting her know she needed to be capitalizing on her moment. Wow. So wow. what this is, is it's a look at your 2021. This is the major things we're focusing on. So we have all partnerships. We have, you know, the I don't know. It's crazy because like I watch Ball in the Family. If you don't, if you guys don't know what that is, like LaMelo Ball, LiAngelo, all them, like the Ball brothers, right? I watch them. Like I watched that whole series of them growing up and they, they did this stuff with like with their like their shoe and all that. But for some reason, this doesn't hit the way the other shit does. You know what I mean? And it's probably because they actually had talent and they actually had to work towards a goal. It felt like they were coming from the trenches. They really had nothing. You know what I mean? And they were doing unprecedented things. I feel like that's why it was so cool to watch. Whereas this is just, I just see like an entitled girl that has a following for really doing absolutely nothing. And then it's like, like why even watch? It just doesn't interest me, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just a hater. I don't know. Different companies you're working with, like, you know, ring lights and starting a clothing company. So, and then you have books and TV shows. Most 16 year olds are not ambitious. They just want to hang out with their friends. So Charlie's managers, essentially just tell her what career she is going to pursue because mm. if the world is going to give you fame, why not make millions of dollars from it? She didn't need to prove herself in these industries. Her follower count was enough. It seemed like Dixie had to try harder to be recognized as a promising talent. That's her sister, right? So she wasn't just seen as Charlie's sister. Oh shit, I just did the... <laughs> My fault. I'm so sorry. Dixie, was it? I'm sorry, Dixon. I'm sorry. There were days I would work all day and Charlie wouldn't do anything. I was like, how do you have all these followers and you're laying in bed all day? <laughs> Dixie made her acting hater. debut in the Brat TV series. Hater alert. Beep, 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 beep. Hater alert. Beep, 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 beep. That's so fucking, listen, Dixon, calm the fuck down. That is your sibling. You should be happy for them, okay? No matter what they're doing, all right? If they're doing better than you, that is amazing. You should fucking support them 100%. Find out what you could do to help them out and grow as an individual, okay? Instead of comparing numbers, follower numbers. Come on, Dixie. Attaway General. This show is essentially a low-budget Grey's Anatomy, replacing the adults with TikTok influencers who can't act, oh, including no. Dixie despite her theater background. Instead of incorporating real-life scenarios to teach important values to children, Attaway General is filled with unrealistic scenarios where these teen volunteers find themselves assisting patients in critical conditions with oh, severe no. medical injuries, despite having no qualifications. They also casually walk around the hospital. You a beta. I'll choke you out with my d 
Shut up. People in and out of patients' rooms and randomly break into TikTok dances in the hallway. The show received terrible reviews, sitting at an abysmal 1 out of 10 on IMDb. Dang. She left the series after one season to focus on her music career, but her music How'd that career go? didn't really go smoothly either. Be Happy was Dixie's debut single, which focused on themes such as mental illness and depression. Oh, as she God. was hyping up the release, nobody had heard her sing before. She was notoriously a bad dancer and now a bad actor. So Wait, nobody... so she can dance? She was notoriously a bad dancer and now- Oh no! No! Don't laugh, I'm sorry, no! <laughs> bad actor, so nobody really knew what to expect. Holy. They got was Dixie moping around her multi-million dollar LA mansion, asking everyone to let her be sad. It was your standard formulaic pop song with Rebecca Black Friday level singing. No. Despite the memes, it gained 100 million views on YouTube and charted in multiple countries. How? Including New Zealand, Ireland, Canada, and Scotland. How? The song was later Later certified gold, prompting a remix featuring singer-songwriter Black Bear and rapper Lil Mosey. Chat, we're making a song. On oh God, we're making a song right after this, bro. Okay? We're making a song. I'm tired of it. There's no way motherfuckers are going 100. I don't care how bad it is. We're making a song. Will stream. No, we're doing it. What do you mean no? We're doing it right after this reaction. We're doing it. We're making a song. You have no choice. We're doing it. And although many expected her to tuck her tail and quit music, she did the opposite. Dixie signed a record deal with record executive L.A. Reid's label, Hitco Entertainment. For the rest of the year, she released three more singles. Naughty List, a Christmas song with Liam Payne. One Whole Day featuring Wiz Khalifa and Roommates. She's consistently kept releasing music over the years and her singing has gotten much better. Your creative talents end at singing and dancing. I know I have no musical talent. I can draw, I can, I can, I can, I can do flips. I can kick people in the face. I can kind of tell a funny joke. I'm really good at editing and, and I guess marketing, but like bitch, I can use all those skills combined. I can force my shitty singing to go viral. You understand? I know how to go viral. If it's one thing, I know how to go viral, bro. For fucking sure. No, the hell you can't. Yes, I can. And you're going to help me. Shut up. Jump in, loser. We're going shopping. Jasuki, don't co-sign me. I don't fuck you right now. I don't fuck you right now. You're unfuckwittable. This isn't bad. She could sing. Unfortunately, her first impression was so mediocre that oh. close-minded people probably don't want to give her music a second chance. Uh oh. Teenagers want independence, but they still rely on their parents a lot for their comfort and advice. Oh, but LA is a very tricky place and people get sucked in. But being around my parents and my family keeps me so grounded and- yeah, We still sleep home, so. I think if they were fat, they would just look like thumbs. Like they just have like a facial structure of like a thumb, but like they don't really have the neck or body for it. Like if they did, it would look crazy. You know what I mean? Like both of them, they all have, they have the same face. Yeah. Like, Do you guys like that? Yeah. Keeps um, us like sane and normal. Charlie and Dixie likely went into business with their family because, well, it'd be more comfortable to attack the crazy Hollywood lifestyle as a group. The D'Amelio family YouTube channel was launched, which would lay the foundation for their reality show. These videos only proved that they were just any other ordinary family. It also sparked their first major controversy together. In November 2020, Charlie uh -oh. lost roughly 1 million followers after posting the first episode in a new series called Dinner with the D'Amelios. The series was intended to feature the family eating a meal with a different surprise guest. In the first episode, the D'Amelio sat down with James Charles for a paella dinner prepared for them by private chef Aaron May. The dish, traditional to Spanish culture, contained snails. Dixie picks up the snail, repulsed by the idea of eating it, and the chef tries to convince her to try it. This is what happened. Yes. Mm, yummy. See? <laughs> it sometimes happens when... Don't be so dramatic. Yeah. Excuse dude. yourself. <laughs> Oh, she actually threw up. Ew. Do we have any dino Ew. While not liking snails is normal, it's obviously very rude to gag and make a huge scene. Imagine how the chef felt seeing that. Especially when later in the video, Dixie picks her nose and eats the booger. Ew. So they have their first what the f I mean, I can excuse the snail. I can excuse the snail. The snail was excused. Why would you eat your booger at the dinner table? <laughs> what is your wrong? Personal chef 
and Charlie is asking for dino nuggets, the privilege this girl has. While their father continues to try and have an engaging conversation with James, the girls couldn't be less interested, picking and playing with their food. To cap it off, Charlie made a comment about her follower count that rubbed James the wrong way. Because imagine if I hit 100 mil a year after hitting mil. Was the 95 not enough for you? After the awkward moment, the girls try to close the show in the most unprofessional way ever. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching um, our YouTube video. Thank you so much for uh, Okay, I'm just going to do it. Thank you for watching the first ever and most likely the last ever episode of Dinner with the Demilios. Kind of sad how James was Jeez. scolding the girls for their manners and not the parents. James is nice to the chef. Any adult watching this knows that teenagers acting impolite or goofy during a dinner is extremely common. True. It's under the circumstances that made it so bad. They have a celebrity chef, a celebrity guest, and are filming the entire experience to launch a brand new series for their own business. So you'd think these girls would be on their best behavior. The entirety of social media erupted calling the girls entitled. The parents were not disciplinary enough. True. As usual, why did we make these people famous? Some people timestamped every single moment of the video criticizing a facial expression or movement from them being rude. Dixie tried to apologize and say that people were unfairly criticizing her based on an out of context 15 second clip. I don't think it was out of context. Dixie. I think you're just rude, bro, to the chef. You're rude to everybody. But at the same time, they're kids, right? They're fucking little teenagers. So of course they're going to be like that. You know what I mean? It's almost unfair to think that they're going to be mature, you know? But public figures they're under a lot of scrutiny so they're gonna get the backlash it's just how it is bro it's just the internet chat it's the internet ridiculous because we had all of the context we need charlie also addressed this dixie issue. was 18 when this happened you know they're entitled they're entitled adults okay they're still living with their parents they don't really understand true life you know so it's the internet chat situation we've since talked to chef aaron may and like he's not upset he was in on the joke so he was like there was not, no joke you were just being mean it wasn't a thing where we were being blatantly disrespectful it was more a thing like you joke around with your friends everyone on my team is friend and family like Apparently, this was all just a skit for the video. Charlie addressed losing 1 million followers after her comment about wanting to hit 100 million followers in a year. When I had said about the followers thing, I genuinely just thought it would be so cool to hit a huge, huge milestone a year after hitting another milestone. I never meant for you guys to make it seem like you were numbers or did not mean anything. And I Now, if she kept this statement short and sweet, a lot of people would have considered this being a misunderstanding. Uh -oh. But she made a crucial mistake and began crying on camera. Sorry. Seeing how people reacted to this, like, I don't even know if I want to do this anymore. Like, this is messed up stuff that people are saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you can't. <laughs> you literally can't do that because now you have assholes like me that would go out of my way to unfollow you just so you fucking. Buy. <laughs> That's so fucked up, though, chat. It's fucked up. But when people know they could get to you, you know what I mean? Like, they're gonna come fuck with you. It's just how it is. It's fucked. It's super fucked. Crying over a follower account? Yeah, true. True. Like, people telling me to myself people just like oh, blatantly fucked. disrespecting the fact that i'm still a human being is not okay at all oh my god i don't see any tears um what she's saying is true though you know what i mean being again being a content creator kind of sucks because you're at, at the exposure of everybody like someone could just take a clip from me and then i could just be fucking just publicly lash dude i mean it fucking sucks but whatever the points she was making were valid. Mm -hmm. She didn't deserve that level of bullying. True. But many people look at crying as trying to take a situation and make yourself the victim and then try to gain sympathy. Mm -hmm. By doing this, it also allowed for people to spin the narrative with headlines saying, Charlie D'Amelio cries after losing 1 million followers. Oh, shit. Which we know is not why she was crying. But that just furthered the narrative that she is spoiled and famous for no reason. But ultimately, it didn't really matter because she became the first person to surpass 100 million followers nice. on TikTok, which prompted numerous accusations that Charlie was buying TikTok followers because nobody still, after all this time, could understand why you would follow her. From day one, Charlie and the entire D'Amelio family's biggest conflict was the hate. If you have followers, you're not considered a person. You're just a thing that people get to judge and True. objectify and call names and bully. So it's like they don't expect it to hurt us, but like we all do. No, the fuck we don't. Who the fuck is we? Chat, y'all can suck my d 
Oh God, bro. Yo, I don't think, I think, nah, 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 I'm lying, I'm lying. I think the most hurtful thing one of y'all said to me, it was something about like, like, I don't know. I was trying my hardest to read something and I just looked in the chat and it was just like L reader or something. And that shit just, it, it just hurt deep. You know what I mean? It was like that, that shit, I felt that in my soul. I was like, bitch, nah, nah, I'm gonna start reading books after this stream. You know what I mean? I'm gonna practice, I'm gonna be the best reader ever. I, I, I still, I still struggle, but like, f you. Our world is difficult especially when there isn't much to judge. People usually acquire fame for possessing a skill or talent that is extraordinary, which makes people flock together to pay attention to that skill. True, what the you fuck? Have to work. What the fuck is our skill or talent? What the fuck am I even, like, why are y'all here? Fuck is my talent, dude. I, I have a really big head and it, and it, it grows like this. You're funny, I guess, you're funny. You're funny? Oh, that's my talent? Oh my God, I, I'm a ta I'm talented. I'm talented. You're entertaining? Yeah, you like this coochie because you're dumb as fuck and that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Comedian, you're funny. Okay, I'll take and I bow. Thank you, chat. Thank you, chat. Thank you, thank you. Sometimes you need some positive reinforcement. Grind. Show passion and dedication to a craft. Honestly, I feel like I'm so smart. That's why you guys follow me. That's why you follow me. You're like, oh my God, he's so fucking smart. He's such a fucking genius. He's so smart. He's fucking guy so smart. I love him. He's so good looking and smart. For years before anyone is going to respect you. They were given followers and fame and feel entitled to be given support every time they find a shiny new career they want to pursue. So people give hate to the D'Amelios because they get to- Who is that? Why she look 37? Of Walton, any creative industry other people are dying to get into. They get paid more for mediocre work than experts in their field. So it's not surprising the world wants to hold them to the same standard as experts since they are getting paid just as much as them. Charlie became a New York That's Times bestseller oh. after writing a book called Essentially Charlie. Charlie, the ultimate guide to keeping it real, which covered topics of identity, cyberbullying, social media, and body image, as well as Charlie's childhood and family life. Best-selling author, voice actor, professional dancer, podcaster, YouTuber, clothing designer, makeup designer, Jesus. chef, musician, all within two years of being famous. She tried everything. Honestly, I would hate to be born into a rich family and being like super, super privileged and entitled. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's like, it's like playing The Sims and then you just put mad cheat codes in to just have unlimited money. You know what I mean? Because you're going to get so bored of life. I don't know if we, if we have like someone that's crazy rich in here. You know what I mean? I don't know if there's anyone like that, bro. But like, dude, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Like the, the funniest moment, funniest moments I have is like me being fucking broke with my friends. You know what I mean? Just doing stupid shit just to cure boredom. You know what I mean? I couldn't, I couldn't imagine just like, I don't know. I'm very Sims rich. Hmm. I'm playing Sims right now. I want to play Sims, chat. I, I low-key want to continue my story. But was committed to nothing. So the only thing left to do was start a reality TV oh, show. Oh no. The D'Amelio show premiered on Hulu in September of 2021 and was an immediate success. It became the most watched unscripted series among all first season titles in the genre on Hulu. Season one was them, unsurprisingly, becoming famous and dealing with the overwhelming amount of hate. They even put hate comments on the screen whenever the girls do anything. Waking up in the morning reading hate comments, <laughs> trying to predict the criticism they will inevitably get. This is just giving haters more power and will ultimately True. make them want to comment more. True. This is the only setback that the de She seems like the type of person to start crying BC someone called her mid but I love you Ken Jai. Mid 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 have ever faced Thank you for the 100 bits. People not liking them. Mariana Trimble of Washington Square News called the Demilio show a surprisingly humble look at TikTok's most famous family. Mm. You may be shocked to find that you have more in common with celebrities than you thought. Well they were a normal family for 20 years and famous for 2 years so it's not that surprising to think they are just What is normal? What is no upper class? Normal? Normal. I'm not over the $52,000 a year school. Sorry, buddy. Like everyone else. Not but like everybody two else. took a weird turn. And roaches in my fucking cabinet. They documented Charlie's new burning passion to pursue a music career. Music was the outlet for Dixie to break away from just being Charlie's sister. And since Charlie was speed running every career path, you would think they would just let Dixie be the singer. Do ce celebrity worse, boxing. They lied to Dixie for months, claiming that Charlie was at an acting class when she was getting singing lessons. Uh so when they broke the news, Dixie wasn't happy. I was caught off guard and then expected to be like, oh my god, this is so perfect. You know what? Why don't you put this song on my album? We could do it together. Like, that's how they wanted me to react. And I'm like, guys, no. Charlie did end up releasing a couple songs that saw moderate success, but as a shock to Jealous ass sister, super jealous. But at the same time, why would they lie to her? Is kind of weird as well. I think the whole family dynamic is kind of toxic. To nobody, jealous. she doesn't seem committed to that career path either. We also see even more pressure from managers for Charlie to pursue business ventures. Right now, my skin is like kind of not been the best. So I feel like 
just getting my skin fixed because it's like really bad right now and I don't think it's fair of me to be like, use my skincare ones. That's what? not what I want. I feel like a fraud and I don't enjoy feeling like that. She also appeared in Dancing with the Stars, which was the first time a business venture made sense. And actually, Charlie and her partner nice. Mark Ballas won season 31. Nice. The other main theme about season two was how Dixie was in a toxic relationship with her boyfriend Noah. How many times have you guys quietly separated <laughs> and gotten back together? Over the last year. However, season three gets even darker, starting with their father talking about the family's goals for this season. Goals for this year, I would say what our goal is every year, to do no harm to our family. What? And then they go on to make an entire season about Dixie and Charlie hating each other. You guys need me. Like, you act like you don't. I don't need you. Great. You too. And you can find a ride home, you can walk home, you can... Can I find another room? Okay. Who? Anyone else? I have Uber. This is disgusting to see. This is genuinely disgusting to see. As a parent, they should be fucking ashamed. If my kids were to ever do this stupid shit, I'm bringing them into a room, punching both of them in the chest, and saying, figure that shit. Oh my God, that disgusts me. Oh my God. God, that disgusts me. Fuck out of here. Hell no. It's nothing but, listen, chat, listen to me right now. It's nothing, that is family. That is nothing but love there. You understand? That is not competition, that is family. Stop playing with me, bro. Great. It's that white people shit. I'm, I'm gonna just say it just like that. I don't give a fuck if you don't like it. This is that white people shit, bro. I don't give a fuck what none of y'all say. This is that white people shit. This was just what we see on camera. Charlie says it's even worse off camera. Like, she doesn't really see how she could even like be the problem like the cameras see a mild version that like no one actually i don't like seeing this i don't even want to watch this anymore scripted since their careers are very boring the show producers need menial drama to spiral into something bigger so they have a storyline mtv producers purposely antagonize ryan sheckler on his show to get him to cry and lash out which led to him developing an alcohol addiction. Mark Jeez. and Heidi are not stepping in because if the sisters aren't fighting, the show is just them making mediocre music and complaining about hate comments. Just get, someone get pregnant, some, like someone start popping titties. Like, what are we talking about here, dude? You can make shit exciting. You can make shit go crazy. Like what? Beat your wife. You, you Instead of instead of making your fucking, your kids fight, how about you beat your wife? That'd be fun. I'll fucking watch that reality show. Kenji, what? What, bro? I'm just saying, if you're, if you are so shameless to put your kids under scrutiny like that, bro, right you don't care about your kids at all bro fuck it why even care about your wife just start just start doing stupid shit have your wife stab you when you sleeping what enough it's okay not to talk chat y'all not fucking hear me bro kenji please stop how about suck my dick mods put in emote only mode all y'all are fucking stupid as shit any motherfucker stupid as shit what i'm trying to say is you have a tv show i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna explain it like y'all dumb because you guys are fucking stupid all you motherfuckers oh, could you stop talking shut up bro okay eat my ass i hear you to be honest what i'm saying is if you guys were all parents right if you guys were all parents and you had fucking kids and your kids have clout you are now using your clout or their clout and, and not caring you're not, you don't care about anything the family dynamic you don't care about your family you don't care about your kids the only thing you care about is is fucking money and views bro at that point and that is disgusting you have no morals you have no faith so at that point since you want some fucking views why don't you get real shameless and just start doing some stupid shit okay and, and do it for yourself and, and not your fucking kids you see what i'm saying instead of instead of making your kids do all this shameless shit why don't you fucking do it instead but you're too much of a fucking coward and a shitty parent to do that do you understand damn i don't like i don't like when y'all chat i'm telling you right now i don't like when y'all just start exploding be like stop talking stop talking when i'm making valid points because it genuinely pisses me off oh god i ban everyone in here bro and matter of fact I'm, I'm picking you i'm just picking a random motherfucker come here shut your ass up shut your ass up kitty smiley who else want it you can take it off of emote only now with that being said it does seem like dixie has genuine disdain for charlie this wouldn't be the first time dixie plays the i'm better than you because i'm older card i get like for you it must be really exciting because like i always came in first and like yeah. now you finally have your time to shine no i think it's so cute that you riding on my coattails like really worked out for you no i mean like that was your whole life i mean two years compared to 18 it's like really different yeah 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 and again it's reality tv so we have to take this with a grain of salt like that's happening in the back seat oh my god pull over and whip their ass bro kind of seems like this family is destroying itself it but is the interest in the d'amelios is drying up because they're just a normal, pretty non-problematic family. 
which for the sake of humanity is great, but for entertainment, it's stale. All of their controversies are nothing compared to most celebrities, which again, I would run I would run away and start my own trap house. The, the fucking reality TV people would pull up to my, my shit and they gonna have to see my trap house and how I'm living. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I was a TikToker, but now I'm living in the trenches. What's up with you? Well, what you, you, you trying to get served? Get the fuck off my block. Fuck ass, just, just get the fuck out of here. Just fucking dead or you don't belong, you don't That's belong here. Thing. The Kardashians maintain their fame through calculated publicity stunts, drama, sex tapes, contractual relationships with men who are A-list celebrities, Yeesh. having children. Reality TV is a soulless industry. Nobody's life is interesting enough to be on display like this. So you either have to intentionally create conflict or your show gets canceled. We usually deal with celebrity nonsense because they offer something of value in return. Kanye continuously disappoints his fans, but he has created so much great music that they will block out his antics and praise his art. True. Similar things can be said about Shia LaBeouf or even Bam Margera. Even though the D'Amelio controversies are small, I remember this. Charlie is pretty unproblematic. Most people don't rush to her defense because she is known for TikTok dances and brand deals. Nobody's gonna be like, I'm gonna ignore the Charlie controversy because she drinks Dunkin' Donuts coffee so well on her TikTok. <laughs> it seems like this family is trying to force themselves to be something they are not, and it may be destroying them. Forbes reported Charlie made 17 million in 2021. Jeez. And the family company is worth $100 million. They have won the American dream. The already rich family got even richer. These days, Charlie's comment section is flooded with- Isn't that messed up, bro? The already rich, already got <laughs> Yeah, that is insane. Chat, chat is just wild, bro. Spare change. People who say she fell off. She doesn't get millions of views and likes anymore. First, it was famous for no reason. Now it's not famous enough. It's never going to end. Ignore the Stupid. hate comments. Why let Hollywood destroy your family True. for their entertainment? True. Absolute Patrick got what you are about to set your ass up, bro. Patrick got amazing takes. Absolutely amazing. Ten out of ten would recommend.